in this video i am going to talk about the solutions of the tutorial sheet that i have already uploaded i'll start with question number 1 first of all in question number 1 a 4 bit asynchronous counter is given In this video I'm going to talk about the solutions of the tutorial sheet for asynchronous counters I'll start with the problem number 1 which is a 4 bit asynchronous binary counter is given as you can see this diagram four flip flops are there so this is a 4 bit asynchronous counter each flip flop is negative edge triggered so this is the negative edge triggered this bubble represents a negative edge triggered has a propagation delay of 10 nanoseconds now we have to develop a timing diagram showing q output of each flip flop and we have to determine the total propagation delay time from the triggering edge of a clock pulse until a corresponding change can occur in the state of q3 and we have to calculate the maximum clock frequency as well now first of all this is the timing diagram now as i told you as you can see it over here the negative edge triggered that means the outputs are going to change for every negative edge triggering so this is our positive edge going from 0 to 1 whereas this is our negative edge going from 1 to 0 so every time a negative edge is appearing in our clock signal there is a change in the state of output now as this is a 4 bit asynchronous counter so it will count from 0 to 15 so now you can see q3 q2 q1 q0 so q3 is our msd and uh, q not is our lsp now for the first clock cycle as initially when clock is zero q not q1 q2 q3 all are 0 0 0 for the first clock cycle that is for the negative edge triggering it is 0 0 0 1 then for the second clock cycle 0 0 1 for the third change over here 0 0 1 so this process will continue till the value 1 1 1 1 that is 15 and afterwards we have the recycle condition that is 0 0 0 and 0 so this is the first portion of this question the timing diagram for negative edge triggering now just see a point this timing diagram has been representing a zero delay so that means we have designed a timing diagram without any delay as the negative edge is coming at the same instant the outputs are changing so we have just designed the timing diagram without any delay now i am going to talk about the total time delay which is going to appear in this now what is the total time delay as per the question they are asking we have to calculate the propagation delay until a corresponding change can occur in state of q3 now q3 is going to change its value twice as you can see it over here there is a change in q3 and there is a change in q3 so q3 is changing its value twice as per the timing diagram so first of all we have four flip flops connected the time delay for one flip flop is 10 nanoseconds so the total time delay will be 4 into 10 nanoseconds that is total 40 nanoseconds and 
what is the value of frequency frequency is one by time period so we will get the maximum clock frequency to be equal to 25 megahertz now i am going to talk about problem number 2 now we have to design an asynchronous counter having modulus 12 so what is mod 12 or modulus 12 it can count total 12 states so total 12 states will be 0 to 11 that is total 12 states now let us see first of all the requirement of the flip flops if we talk about three flip flops it will give us 2 raised to power of 3 that is equal to 8 which is less so next step will be number of flip flop requires 4 so we can design maximum 16 states although we require only 12 states but we have to use four flip flops for the same now as per the truth table what is our requirement our counter must count from 0000 to 1011 that is it must count from 0 to 11 and the 12th state should not come although a normal next state will be 12 but in this counter we do not want 1100 rather we require 0000 that is the recycle condition after 11 now what about the connections as per the truth table when so ever q3 and q2 will become equal to 11 our counter must reset this is the condition once again when q3 and q2 are 11 our counter must reset its value that means q2 and q3 must be connected with a nand gate but the question is why nand gate because we have to give this signal to the clear pin and this is actually a clear bar pin which is active low so actually we want to give a zero signal when q3 and q2 are 1 1 a nand gate output will be zero and once a zero signal has been given to the clear pin you can see it over here our counter will reset its value and it will again start from 0000 so this is the implementation of modulus 12 asynchronous binary counter q2 and q3 are connected with a nand gate and the nand gate is further connected with clear bar pin you can see it over here it is mentioned over here clear bar pin of all the flip flops next the timing diagram so the timing diagram is also representing that it is counting from 0 to 11 and the 12th condition is reset condition or the recycle condition how many states does a modulus 14 counter have what is the minimum number of flip flops required so a modulus 14 counter can count total 14 states from 0 to 13 and the minimum number of flip flops which we require is 4 because 2 raised to the power of 4 is 16 next problem is a 4 bit binary ripple counter so what is ripple counter ripple counter is nothing but asynchronous counter which is initially in 0000 state before the clock input is applied the clock pulses are applied to the counter at some time instant let us assume t1 and then again removed some time later at time instant t2 now once the time has been removed the counter is observed to read 0011 that is 3 so how many negative going clock transitions have occurred during the time the clock was active at the counter input now one thing is for sure that my counter is going to count 0 1 2 3 but the question over here is my counter can count 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 till 15 once again 0 1 2 3 it has not been mentioned that when we are observing 3 so the possible answers for this question is minimum 
three negative clock cycles 19 that is 3 plus 16 then 19 plus 16 35 51 and so on so that depends if it is mentioned in the quotient then it is fine otherwise we have the possible number of outputs with us